Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just join us, we're talking about divorce this morning. Now, where did this come from, you? Yes, Chris Rock was discussing his divorce attorney, who's also representing Melinda Gates. And he was saying that he, you know, he had some of the worst moments of his bitter divorce back in 2016. But there was one piece of wisdom that his lawyer shared that helped him get through his two-year legal battle. And that was the most contentious parts were only a tiny fraction of what was at stake. He said, at the end of the day, you're only talking 4% one way or the other. And he said that's what helped put it in perspective. Mm. All right, so let's, let's talk divorce this morning, breakups. Were they good? Were they bad? Uh, I'm, su- I'm sure some breakups were good. Well, let's talk about it. 800 585 I don't, I don't, I don't ever want to go through a divorce. Hell no. I've been with my wife uh, a, a very long time, and we've been, we've been together longer than we've been married. But you know, when you think of something that's so pure and so personal, it usually it seems like when it's a divorce happening, it gets reduced to just a business deal. And that's heartbreaking. That's true. But, you know, a lot of times with divorce, a lot of people say that, you know, they spend so much money on attorneys that a lot of times attorneys make off really with, with you know, with divorces mm-hmm. because people can't necessarily get it together. So they go through. The, and like you said, you're in court for two years. How much is that costing you? Damn. Let's go to the phone lines. Hello. Who's this? Hey, man, it's Thomas. Thomas, what's Hello. up, man? What's going on? What's going on, man? Yeah, it's always a good thing. I mean, you can have a good uh, breakup, marriage, divorce. You had one? Yeah, I had one. We've been, we was friends for a while. Then we got married. We was married almost 10 years. We got a divorce, you know, infinitely on my part. But, you know, we, we're still friends to this day. We Actually, we're about to go on a trip a couple months from now. And we actually talk about getting married. Maybe down a lot of Oh wow! Oh, wow! Okay. Yeah, wow. Right, ha- have you changed your ways though? Have you have you uh, learned how to keep your PP to yourself? Oh yeah, man. You know, going through that taught me a lot. It really taught me how to be in hand and take responsibility in my actions. There you go. All right, brother. Hello, who's this? Hey, my name is T. Good morning, DJ and B, Charlemagne and Angela. Good morning. We're talking about divorce. You said you had a good experience with divorce. I actually did. Um, my ex-husband, I offered to drive him to the courthouse to make the process more smooth because I knew he didn't have a ride. And <laughs> the thing, was, <laughs> the thing was, he actually had the worst experience in his life that day because the same in the same courthouse, um, not in the same room, but his baby's mother was there with the same court date for child support. Wow. I I didn't understand how that went, but wow. when I seen him, I was like, oh, shoot, you <laughs> look really, really bad. But I Dang. actually offered to drive him to the courthouse because I wanted to make the process more smooth. Mm-hmm. I just wanted it done and over with, you know, no issues. But we had a good experience. We're friends. We're cool today. Okay. okay. I mean, I, mean, I can't tell by the way you you stressed that he looked bad about three or four times. <laughs> he bad, you know, I mean, she I just made him. He, he ain't had no car. He ain't had no you know car. what I'm saying? He looked bad. Hello, who's this? Good morning, it's Margaret. How are you? Margaret. Good hey, morning, Mary. Margaret. We're talking divorce. How was your divorce? It was horrible. I was the husband in the divorce. I got drugged and I got. I ended up bankrupt. What? What? He wouldn't. Yes, I ended up bankrupt. I was the husband in my divorce. Why? You had all the money? I was the primary breadwinner throughout the divorce. He had 10 jobs in 10 years. Wow. So So he took more than half? What did he get? He ended up with his house because he bought a house while we were separated. And I didn't even get spousal support. I got laid off from my job because I went through a divorce in the middle of the last... um, downturn 2009 i lost everything see i don't want that like and that's another reason it's it's sad right because like i said something so pure and personal gets reduced to a business decision and this is a person that you would never let that happen to if y'all was together so why would you let it happen to them when y'all not together right especially being that y'all shared so much Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you just join us, we're talking divorce. We're asking 800-585-1051. Did you have a nasty divorce? Is it okay? Was it actually a good thing? Who are we talking to? Hello? Yes. Hi. Hey. Hi, is me? 
<laughs> Good morning. What's your name? Kalia. Kalia, let's do, you went through a divorce. Was it good? Was it bad? How was it? Talk okay. to us. So we didn't go through the divorce, but we went through the process of the divorce. And Charmaine said he wanted to hear a good story, a good outcome. So the good part is that me and my husband are still together. Like, we stayed together. We, you know, we made it through the storm. But it's a very, 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 very hard thing to go through. It's, it's weird. Like, you can't look at the other person the same way as you've been through experience. Like, Damn. Mm -mm. So what? So the finances, the kids, the you know, with mine, with yours, all of that stuff is just like a pain. And see, that's what makes it so sad. Like, I keep saying, y'all, you shared something so pure, so personal, so loving, and yeah. it just gets reduced to business. And then it's like me and my husband, we was, we've we been together now 16 years, but we've been together since we was like 18, 19. Wow. So, you know, in that time, like, my daughter was born, my son was born, he's in the military, so we've been separated apart, back together. So when we actually went to that, like, that was like the hardest part of our relationship but you know thank god we made it to the point where now we're back together and we did just have another baby this year but um hopefully we stay on the good track and we never have to go back and visit that section of our relationship but it just makes everything like just hard like it's, it's a terrible thing to go through well i'm right glad on. that you're going through it uh righteously absolutely hello who's this Shree. Hey, Shree. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. We're talking divorce. Talk to us. Talking divorce. So I'm currently legally separated. Mm -hmm. um, want to be full divorce, but because of the family laws in the state of Florida, I choose not to deal with the government. So me and my ex live under the same roof due to our children being seven, six, and three. We try to live under separate roofs, but it just wasn't the greatest thing for them. Mm -hmm. Plus, having help with the children, it's just easier to call him and ha have him help. So how does it work with dating? Um, it works because it works only because I'm honest with who I'm dating. Like, I have a child together. We are still legally married. Um, they, he will always be there. So if you call me and I'm out to dinner with my kids, he may be there, and you have to accept that. There's no emotional connection at all. Mm -hmm. We're not going back to being husband and wife strictly period, but I do want my kids to understand that their mother and father are there for them and trust that. And right. unfortunately for them to believe that as they get older, they have to see us together in a positive light. Yeah, it's just, it's just mad awkward when you're on a date and you say to him, well, you know, my husband lives with me, but we not together anymore. It almost sounds like when well, you say I, I live with my parents, I, well, but you I'm really live with date, them. I'm not going to go on a date with somebody who doesn't accept the fact before. I'm very upfront, like mm -hmm. in the beginning conversation. So I work all day. I don't really go to clubs, so my only options are dating it, right? Mm -hmm. When they're like, well, tell me about yourself. That's something I, that's the paragraph you get. You know, I've got kids. I'm a medical assistant. I work all day, but I'm still legally married. My Is he honest about involved, who he dates? No emotional connection. I'm sorry, did you? Is he honest about who he dates? Um, no, he's not honest at all. That's why we're not together. <laughs> I'm just, I believe you. I would just, if I was dating you, I would just have to see it for myself. Because it's like when somebody says, oh, no, nah, I don't live with my parents. They live with me. Right. And it, it, it and it's hard. Um, and a lot of guys don't trust it, but that's on them. But you know, how many guys out there have four or three girlfriends? So if you can't, if you're not secure on yourself and you don't want to believe me, then you can go and find somebody else. It's, 2021 who needs to be super involved with if you know that you're not going to believe it why carry it on right true and you, right. Can, and you can pick up on that vibe you know i'm 36 i catch you know body language you can tell when somebody stops texting and stuff like that they're not comfortable with it but again i live in florida half these dudes down here have a wife, a girlfriend, a concubine, and some hoe that they do on the side. Jeez. If you want to come at me and be like, oh, well, you're still being married. I can't deal with you. Well, you're not a strong enough man to deal with me in the first place. That's true. How old are your kids again? They're seven, six, and three. Dang, so y'all got a long time to still be together. I wonder what's going to happen after, you know, 15 years from now, when all the kids are 18 um, and on their way out of the house. I don't know. I, I think that's going to be hard for him because he's the secular life. Where, you know, he's just, he goes to work and, you know, he's, on, he's, he's Caribbean, so they don't 
have a whole lot of hobbies. Me, on the other hand, I'm like, shoot, what am I doing for a Contracts, catch me in Dubai, making money. You know, like, I'm not going to sit around and just be boring. I'm going to show my daughters and my son what a strong woman is because why did I have kids? True. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mama. All right. Other than the Caribbean part. Yeah, you just insulted all Caribbean people this morning. <laughs> Caribbean people don't have no hobbies. According to her. <laughs> Jesus. So what's the moral hobbies. of the story, guys? <laughs> The moral of the story is divorce sucks, man. You know what I mean? I, I feel for anybody who has to go through it because, like I said, something so pure and personal just always seems like it gets reduced to business. Like, ugh. 